Humans have been obsessed with the idea of an afterlife since the dawn of religion. Everybody wants to think they might be immortal, right? In his latest book, Heavens on Earth, Dr. Michael Shermer, author and founding publisher of Skeptic Magazine, explores this obsession as well as the ways scientists have been researching the quest for immortality. Dr. Shermer joins us now. Thanks for being here. Good morning. So what's cool about this to me is that it's a skeptic's look at this idea, right? That Correct. we normally associate with faith. What inspired your interest in this in the book? Uh, well, I'm in my 60s, so I guess I'm cramming for the final. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I feel that way, too. Uh, well, I've written on uh, science and pseudoscience, science and religion, science and God, science and morality. So this is sort of the natural extension of my work as a scientist. How would a scientist look at these kind of ultimate existential type questions? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing bigger than, you know, what happens after you die. And so I go through all the different scenarios, religious scenarios, you know, I I Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, plus the, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism. But the core of the book is scientific attempts to achieve immortality. That is, in Woody Allen's famous quip, I don't want to live on in my work, I want to live on in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, me too. So how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of people, Silicon Valley billionaires, actually, uh, Google has a company called Calico. They've invested hundreds of millions of dollars to get people to break through the upper ceiling of about 120 years. So I debunked the myth that people today live twice as long as they used to. No, that's not true. People centuries ago lived in their 80s and 90s, just not very many. Mm -hmm. Now, public health measures and vaccinations have gotten more and more of us up to the upper ceiling. What these guys want to do is break through that. So we're not there yet. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, you, know, I'm, uh, you have to apply science and skepticism to these kind of extraordinary claims. We're not there. You know, the, the, across the board, when you hit your mid to late 80s, things start falling apart uh, everywhere. So there's no magic bullet. There's no, you know, like if I just take this supplement or this vitamin right. or this curcumin. The or, of youth. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah. Now, there are things we can do, you know, sleep, good diet, exercise, you know, but we already know this. <laughs> and all that's going to do is get you further up the, the, the ladder before, you know, things fall apart so now in the, in the tradi religious traditions of course they think uh, in a sort of a dualistic sense there's something more than just my physical body that mm -hmm. I want to keep going my soul so what is that the soul well, it's a pattern of information that represents you we know from biologists that all the cells in your body have been replaced uh, several times in your life about every 10 years it's all recycled new atoms new molecules and so on you're not the same you you were a decade ago Yet you Tell still think about you know, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, ah, well, I keep working out. <laughs> uh, but more than that, you, but you still feel like you. So the, it, it's the information. You, yourself is your memories, your personality, your temperament, everything that's about you. So what this, these uh, scientists want to do is somehow preserve that. How do you do that? So the most radical version, of course, is the cryonics. You freeze yourself. Yeah. Then, We've, everybody's you know, heard about yeah, that right. yeah. idea. But the more radical still is mind uploading, where we, we copy your connectome, the equivalent to your genome. My what now? Connectome. <laughs> okay. So the, the, you know what your genome is. So the connectome would be all of your memory stored in the synaptic connections of your brain. So my hard drive. Your hard drive. Mm -hmm. If we could somehow scan that, copy it, and put it in a computer, you'd go in there. This is the theory. I, I, I have serious questions about this. Because let's say we did this while you were still alive. We slid you into a sophisticated fMRI brain scanner, copied your connectome, uploaded it like Johnny Depp in Transcendence. Mm -hmm. You know, he dies and, and he, they turn on the computer. He's in the computer looking out through the little camera hole. And so, like, AI would take over? Yeah. And, well, oh, you would, would annoy my husband a, so know. much. <laughs> <laughs> you would essentially. A version of, of Margaret? You would essentially be an AI. I still see your shoes, pick up your socks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Your husband's not getting off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> but but even let, 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 let's say you had yourself cloned and, and there was a copy of your connectome in the cloud and something happened to a tragic a car accident or whatever and, and he brings home the clone with the new with the copy of you because you, you backed up every night and there you <laughs> are there you are at home with your husband but but let's say you survived the traffic accident and you decide to go home and surprise your husband and you hear these voices from the kitchen and it's like who is this woman with my husband you walk in there and there's it's you. you and it's me and and the and that woman's Will going well she I'm vacuum that's <laughs> what I want. <laughs> yeah, if you could just get if her to so, do the hard work i'm in <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So in this research when you're doing this book, did you notice that anything, and I'm sure you've studied so many different things, is this strictly a, a Western civilization thing or is it just a strictly uh, a, a, a wealthy thing? Because to me, I can't imagine like people that don't have the means thinking about, I want to freeze myself. Yes, this is, this is definitely a first world problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is Silicon Valley billionaires, you know, kind of playing with their 
science fiction ideas, which is fine, you know, and, and you know, when they say to me, Shermer, don't you want to live to be 500? I go, look, just get me to 80 without prostate cancer, 90 right. without Alzheimer's. I sort of feel that you way know. too. I feel like part of the preciousness of life is that we know it's brief and that, that that's, right. you know, the ultimate profound beauty of it all. Well, just to Besides, know that. Besides, what would you look like at 500? I just yes, don't know. I don't want to see me at 500. No, no. Know. <laughs> well, presumably they fix that, you know, the, yeah. the, fix that too. we reprogram your skin cells so you always have 30-year-old skin, oh, or whatever. Okay. Mm. Well, then I've changed my mind altogether. <laughs> you that's you that's know what? Like you could always get bit by a vampire. That's, that, you could live forever. But it, it has other complications. Other issues so I don't know, as well. There's so much. So what do people of faith say about this? Uh, well, they're not worried about it because they already think they're going to heaven. Right. Uh, but, but back to your previous question on the is it Western? Yes, because Buddhists and Taoists and Hinduists they don't think there's any place to go. That the entire universe is consciousness, and so the physical bodies we're in now are just temporary instantiations of consciousness in a physical being. So you just return to where you were uh, in a state of consciousness. So, uh, this so I still get to talk to my friends you, in the yes, stream of it, consciousness. Somehow, going yes, by yes. All of humanity. Now, of course, the, I'm good with that. Questions are, but but is Hitler on the other side? You know, are the bad people there too? Oh. So the Western idea is that heaven is like a cosmic courthouse where justice right. is meted out appropriately, and you're rewarded for being good, and the Hitlers are killed or whatever. So, uh, but this is fraught with all kinds of problems. If I'm physically resurrected in heaven and I'm there with Jesus, how old am I? And, and one Christian sect has an answer. You're 30, because that was a good year to be 30, <laughs> and that's the year. You know, that's when Jesus held Jesus was when he died. So, okay, but the, but how would you still be you? And now I'm 63. So what happened? All the memories between when I was 30 and 63. They're at my house on the hard drive. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank you for being with You're welcome. You're welcome. Dr. Shermer will be s discussing and signing copies of this book, Heaven on Earth Tonight at Seven, at Elliott Book Bay Books Company in Seattle. We've linked more information right here on our website. And we'll be right back. Yeah. Yeah.